Oh yeah. I'll get your name tattooed on me or something like that. The carnage. What is up everybody and welcome to today's video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Zach. This is SC Fishkeeping. In today's video I'm excited because we are adding some fish that I would consider sort of staples in the monster fish keeping world and half of the fish that we're getting I've never had before. Probably the most interesting thing about these fish would be they've been stuck in a different state for 10 days. I bought them, I was unable to get them out of the state and they've just been sitting there ever since. But I'll talk more about that here in a minute because uh, I need to kind of figure out where I'm going. So we'll pick this up when I uh, actually stop driving. Definitely thought the zoom on my camera was better because I was gonna show you that sign right there that says, restricted, keep out. It is an airport, so I suppose it makes sense that they do have some security measures in place. We are going right there to that one in the gray southwest to get the fish, but they only let one person in at a time. And as you can tell, there's somebody hanging out and it's, it's cold and... One eternity later. I'll tell you what, the quickest way to look like an idiot is when you walk into a place you've never been and all you have for a mask is your kid's temporary one from the doctor. Oh yeah. So I walk in there like this and she goes, are you picking up? I go, uh-huh. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I did it. I mean, I walked out of there with what I wanted so I accomplished my goal, but uh, yeah, I looked good doing it. <clears throat> Let's get home. Here he comes, here comes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheel. And we're home with a big old box of fish. This box right here weighs 19 pounds and it came all the way from Dallas, Texas to me here in Omaha, Nebraska, if you didn't know where I live. Uh, it was shipped via Southwest Cargo and it came to me from uh, these wonderful people right here. Focus, not on me. Not on me, on the business card. There you go. Armored Cat Aquatics. I'm gonna put all their information down below in the description because I mentioned that these fish were stuck in the state of Texas for 10 days with me unable to get them back. And I'm gonna kind of give you a recreation of uh, what happened, what led to that. But first I wanna get these guys open so we can check on them and get them uh, acclimating. Yeah, it's a big old box. Let's see. Oh yeah, I got fish, I got cardboard, I got heat packs, and they're still warm, nice. So these fish were actually shipped out to me yesterday, but uh, my cargo area is kind of a pain, and so they, uh, they got here after things were closed. I don't know, can you see? So a little wet, but you know, plenty of water and oxygen left. Any idea what's in there? We got one. And we got two. I'm gonna float them. All right, I gave you a pretty decent look at both of the fish. They are now float acclimating in their new aquariums and I wanna give them plenty of time to make sure that the temperatures match before we go ahead and add them into their new tanks and I show you exactly what they are. But I'm curious how well you know your fish. Comment down below if you can guess one or even both of them. I'll do something crazy like I'll get your name tattooed on me or something like that. What's that, babe? No? I can't get any uh, viewer's name tattooed. Okay, apparently I can't do that, but uh, comment anyway. Well, they acclimate though. I did mention that these guys got stuck down in Dallas for about 10 days before I could get them. And I want to tell you how that happened in the only way that I know how, and that's with a paper and a marker. Over the Halloween weekend, I was down in Dallas, Texas, at Aqua Shella. And if you don't know what Aqua Shella is, it's like shell phone, only not. Aqua Shella is a massive fish convention. This is kind of how the uh, venue looked. This is actually a one to one scale replica, and I circled it so that's how you know it's true. But uh, Aqua Shella has a ton of people. And most importantly, there's a ton of fish. Fish just everywhere. But there's vendors and they have these booths and in these booths they sell the fish. Well, I decided to go look with my eyeballs at one of those fish. And that's where I ran into the lovely people 
at Armored Cat Aquatics. They had these two fish that I wanted. I said, hey, can I buy them? They said, yes. So I bought them and I went ahead and stuffed them in my backpack. So there's fish. That's a horrible fish. So I had two fish in my backpack. That's bad too. I had two really awesome, what am I? Okay, two really awesome fish, you get it. Well, my intention was to take those fish to the airport. I'm gonna eat one of these and it's gonna have Sharpie on it later. And fly them all the way back to Nebraska. Well, going back to the venue, the, actually I think their booth was more like up here. So I'm here, I paid for the fish, I got my two fish, and then I didn't make it from here at the Armored Cat Aquatics booth to here, which is where the YouTube booth was with all your favorite YouTubers and me, before I got a text message. That's my phone, this is it, buzzing. The text message was from American Airlines. And they said, your flight, here's the sweet, awesome airplane again, with the pilot and windows, is not happening. Your flight out late Sunday night is canceled. You are stuck. That's a huge mess. Yeah, I made a mess. I finally start to clean up the fish room and then I throw goldfish and uh, Swedish fish all over. So I will be vacuuming here very shortly, but that's what happened. So I'm at Aquashella, if you couldn't follow along. And uh, I find this booth, I've never heard of Armor Cat Aquatics before, but I got to talking to them and they had some really cool fish. They bagged them up, they knew that I was gonna take them on an airplane, I stuck them in my backpack and I walked maybe 100 feet back over to where the YouTube booth was, which was kind of my home base, and I got a text from American saying that they canceled my flight. I had the last flight out, it was like 9.55 on Sunday, so they could not get me on a new flight until Tuesday. So that was Sunday, so Tuesday, and I didn't have any aquariums or anything down there. So I went back to the people over at Armored, Cats, uh, Armored Cat Aquatics and I said, hey, what are my options? They said, don't worry about it. We'll take the fish back for you and we can ship them to you. And that's how we ended up here. So they hung on to the fish. They made sure that they were doing well after kind of being bagged and moved around and stuff like that. And now I have them right there and over there. You might be able to kind of see this guy right there. I gave you a pretty good look of him earlier. But for those of you that do not know what that guy was, or if you guessed it, good for you. I'm excited for our tattoo together. This is what's known as the Congo Bicher, or the official full name is right here. And a little bit more information about them, right here. So, gonna go ahead and get him out of this bag, and we're just gonna do the old kind of plop and drop. So pour the, the water through a net, catch the fish, Put them in the tank. But holy smokes, should they rubber band this thing. Actually, it's a big enough bag, I can just kind of take my net and stick it in there and scoop him out versus dumping that big old bag through and he's squiggly. Oh, but it's pouring all over the floor. Dang it, oh my goodness. Stay, stay, you're going over here. Perfect. So smooth, but got the, uh, the bicher. Kind of slide him in, and there he goes. Nice and calm, nice and smooth, no issues, no unnecessary water on the floor, right? And he's in the tank. Let's play a game of can you spot the bicher? And he moves, so we all win. He's right there. So this is a 40 gallon breeder tank. Uh, you saw the maximum size that these things can reach, so you know that this is not a, oh, I missed that algae. This is not a forever size tank, but right now this is gonna work as a good kind of quarantine tank because there was nothing in here and it's already cycled and he's got plenty of spots to hide. So we'll let him kind of hang out in there, turn off his light, and we'll get the uh, giraffe catfish in. And then the second fish that I got is down here in this 20 gallon long right there. Kind of hard to tell with all the bubbles on the tank, but I just did a water change on this tank to make sure it was all set up for him but a pretty definitive pattern there, and that snout should give it away. If you don't know what this is, this is a giraffe catfish. Mm -hmm. 
And so we'll do the same thing with this guy here. Pull him out of his bag that he's been floating in. Take the bag. I'm gonna dump it through a net, just off scene, off camera. Take the net. And add him to the tank. And then he swims off into the corner. So same thing with that Beicher as far as his setup goes. This is a 20 gallon long. He's significantly smaller than that Beicher. So he's got plenty of room in here. He's the only thing in here. Lots of uh, room to hide and sand for him to kind of sift through some food and stuff with that, that cute snout. But uh, I don't want to stress him out with the light. So we're going to do the same thing. Turn off said light. And then just give him a few hours to kind of chill. And we'll come back and check on him tonight. All right, so it's been a handful of hours since we added the new fish into their tanks. And I just got to show you something with the Beicher. This, uh, this dude has such a face. It, it has like character and personality and kind of looks like a grumpy old man. But uh, he found a spot underneath the logs here. And let me, let me spin this around. There he is. <laughs> Just hanging out on the rock next to the log, under the rock. But uh, that's kind of why I like this setup. Those rocks have a lot of different spots that he can kind of go under and behind and hide through. But uh, he's just kind of posted up right there with his grumpy old man face. Looks like he might have uh, kind of run into a rock or something as he's getting settled into the tank, but that's okay, that'll, that'll heal up. Uh, I'm gonna drop a pellet in and see if he wants to eat. Drop a couple pellets in, put the lid back down. And we wait. Look at him go. The carnage. So yeah, he didn't move. But that's okay. He's only been in the tank for a couple hours. So, it's to be expected. Let's look at the other guy. Then for this little guy, I did too good of a job setting up his tank and I couldn't find him. So I kind of had to move some stuff around because I do get a little paranoid with new fish that, uh, you know, if I don't see them, that means they got out or something. But uh, nope, he is fine. He is, uh, yeah, you probably can't, uh, you can see him right there. Kind of hiding out in that back corner. I threw some food in there and just like the Beicher, he's not interested, but that's okay. And <laughs> I stand up leaving the giraffe uh, catfish and I want to see if this guy ate anything. And of course all the food is still there, but I'm like, oh, he's not. Where is he? Looking all over the place and you know, check the floor and stuff. No, he's just hiding out. Kind of hiding out back there behind the plants, but it's good. I'm glad they're finding spots to hide. And that just means that they're going to be comfortable and a comfortable fish is a healthy fish and at the end of the day, healthy fish is the name of the game. So another big thank you to Armored Cat Aquatics for taking care of my fish. I made a lot of jokes in this video and had a lot of fun with it, but honestly when I found out that my flight was canceled and I had a backpack full of fish and knew I wasn't going to be able to get out of Dallas until at the very earliest the next day, I was worried about the health of the fish. And Armored Cat Aquatics took my fish back. They uh, kept them healthy, they kept them safe, and they made sure that they got to me safely. So another big thank you to them. All their information, again, is down in the description. So check them out. Coming up, uh, I talked about how we're going to rehome the Fajaca and mess with the largemouth flathead pond upstairs. A lot of people said they want to see the Fajaca first. And now that I'm thinking about it, we kind of need to move this tank to have room for what we're going to do with the largemouth anyway. So. Probably the Fajaka video will be next. But subscribe if you have not already. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, this is Zach with SC Fish Keeping, reminding you that every fish is a keeper. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. See you soon.